actually honestly forgot recording thank you so much okay i just now the session is getting recorded guys now the session is getting recorded okay whoever is listening to the recorded videos it's only been one minute that i have started the session thanks to sumati that she remember she reminded okay the test lead so test lead or the test manager is supposed to create the test plan and we also understood that irrespective of the testing whether it is qa or manual or functional okay or st or sit this is all comes under manual testing okay they have the test plan they have their own test plan okay if you belong to the automation team okay if you are wondering some you know automation testing what is automation testing it is typically done using the tools like selenium okay uft or uh, yeah uft or rft okay so this is what is an automation testing they have the test plan they have their own test plan they create their own test plan it's not that they it, it will come out from the thin air or somebody would give it to them but they would have their own test plan <coughs> security testing have their own test plan this is something we have discussed they have their own test plan and similarly performance testing so we guys have to create our own test plan just like all the other teams just like all the other teams we have to create our own test plan more or less the template would look same for all of them you know when it comes to test plan the template is same but just the contents would be different okay so typically what i used to do is I, i used to start from the st test plan okay most of the sections would be similar with minor differences then i used to st start you know changing or you know doing like hand picking and changing the differences or you know um, doing those small minor changes and uh, there are certain things there are certain sections wherein there are major changes so once i started with a uh, system testing test plan or the earlier version of my performance testing test plan you know usually the work will be 10 to 20% honestly gain uh, honestly speaking guys okay there are certain information that you uh, take from the nfrs and certain information that you collect and that's about it so you're good to go so usually i put like 10 to 20% of efforts in creating the test plan okay 10 to 20% whether it's a new project or the existing project okay completely new project so that you know this is completely new project wherein there are no earlier releases it's a first time the performance is getting performance testing is getting done maybe it's a new project or um, or it's like a release based so you have a earlier uh plan okay earlier project or, or or it's like every release okay every release okay so if it's if it's like every release obviously like you would have a old performance testing test plan from my earlier release i'll take it from there and i'll start it from there if it's completely a new project and there was no no performance testing done before and then there is no um, no test plans of performance testing then i would start with the st test plan so most of the sections would be same so whatever wherever the differences you know i just you to make those changes so that's me guys but it's up to you how you want it to handle in your real time projects okay then we started going through different sections you know we have looked into the different versions obviously there will be as you make the changes there are different versions okay we we did understand about the reviews once you create the test plan you have a peer to peer review the manager review then the client review so every time you know you keep incorporating the review comments the changes to the test plan and you come out with different versions of the test plan and finally you come out with a version wherein you know you can give a walk through you can give a walk through walk through as in you call for all the people who are matter to you or important like somebody one guy from network admin one guy from the database admins one guy from development team okay one uh, one guy uh, uh, from architect so uh, and your manager the client side manager you know the whole program manager whoever is matter uh, matter to you whoever is important to you okay you would call you would invite them for the walk through or yeah you send it send out a walk through invite okay so if you are not sure about who all needs to be invited you can talk to do, you you can talk to your manager and he will give you the list so just send them the invitation and then they are there so walk through means as you go through each and every page you know you will uh, you will walk through or you read out the important sections and the related people should you know agree with you and finally they would ask any doubts if they have any questions they have and finally if everything is okay 
then you get a sign off from all the people again when i said sign off sign off need not have to be only one person sometimes it could be more than one person for me it was three people okay mm -hmm. so you know you send the email, send, send the just test plan to them so that they can sign off and once they signed off you know the test plan is frozen okay so our our baseline okay frozen or baseline okay so once this means that you know you're not supposed to change, make any changes to the test plan or the people cannot suggest any changes to the test plan or or any of the plan that you have done okay so that's what is usually the test plan you know goes through the life cycle or whatever you call is go through so we started looking at different sections okay we started looking at different sections let's quickly go through those sections okay <sighs> So first the pro project background as to you know why this project has actually started okay we went through that as well the project could have started because you know the older version has become completely old and then you wanted to give new futures with a new background i mean with a new you know feel and then you know completely like you know you you get a different feel for that application you know all that or you know different reasons or you know the the certain sections of become have really slow or maybe maybe new features needed to be added so existing features could not need not you know is not enough so different reasons why you start the project okay the document purpose it's very simple all the related people should know about what is your plan okay so all the downstream upstream applications you send this a plan as to how you are planning to test okay so it's like you know you are taking up a mic and telling to everybody as to what is your plan so it is more like that so you cannot actually pick up a mic and talk about it so that's why you create this document and then you send out to all the people that who should, who is matter to you and who should know uh, how you are planning to go about and do your performance testing test objectives may mainly identifying the bottlenecks and looking at the performance of the application and clearly here you lay down who your audiences are okay it could be your program manager performance test manager or it could be even uh, you know the system testing folks your developers your system admins your develop um, database admins everybody whoever you think is audience you can put it out here okay then we looked at the assumptions constraints dependencies and risks i i would advise you to actually go through all of them guys okay go through all of them <clears throat> okay it's very important because so once once you start talking about it once you start talking about it okay well, in the interviews they would ask you oh, can you give me some assumptions that you made in your test plan or what are the constraints that you uh, that you have put in your test plan what are the constraints for your project or dependencies or risks they would definitely ask this question if you say that you have created or involved in creating the test plan they will definitely ask you what are all the assumptions constraints dependencies and risks okay they might ask so um, i have already sent out this test plan to you so just go through few of them don't try to understand all of them i have put more points than required just, just go through few of them so that you know it stays in your mind and if even if you have uh, you know uh, remember couple of assumptions or couple of constraints you are good to go okay and couple of dependencies and risks they would not expect you to go through all of them they are just trying to understand you know whether you have actually created or not when they ask this kind of questions okay no yeah. so that's what we have discussed in the last class okay now we will discuss about the variations and if you are creating the test plan guys you already have the template most of the content is already there so you can start from here honestly speaking or um, you might have your own template you can start copying the stuff from here and put it over there and make some changes which is applicable to your project or you know uh, which which could uh, meet the requirements of your project so that's what you can do so now ne next the next section is the test scope next section is the test scope so let's talk this talk about this test scope in a completely layman's language okay so uh, uh, but you know um, in the real time you know the, it would be little different from this but to, just to get a feel for what is test scope i'm just telling you let's say uh, you're doing um, you're doing the testing for uh, you're doing a testing for uh, maybe maybe an atm okay an atm machine just just uh, you know actually performance testing never happens for an atm machine okay honestly speaking but you know it might happen as well but anyways but <clears throat> but you know just assume there's just an assumption 
just an assumption, you know, you're doing the testing for ATM machine. Okay, so overall idea when they started creating or building this ATM machine is uh, it should support English language. Okay, let's assume it supports in, it should support English language. And in US, they realized that there's certain areas where there is a lot of Spanish population. Okay, so they wanted they wanted this ATM to support Spanish language as well. Okay, and uh, and I don't know what is the other popular language in US. Can you guys come out with some of their other popular languages in US uh, um, other than English and Spanish? Maybe French or maybe uh, Ethiopian. There's a lot of Ethiopian community over there. So what is the language of Ethiopia? Can somebody tell me? Because I know there are a couple of people in the class who are from Ethiopia. What is what is your language? Guys? Amharic. Amharic. Okay. So Amharic, uh, yeah, I'll go with that. Okay, Amharic language. Okay, let's say certain areas they, they, where they want to install the ATM machine, they figured out that there's a lot of you know uh, French community or you know Spanish community, English community, and Amharic community. Okay, obviously you know the English would be the first choice, so they started creating the ATM software related to the ATM. The first language they make sure the ATM supports is the English language. Okay, so for this release in the next release probably they might add Spanish and then the later release they might add French and Amharic. Okay, let's assume. Let's assume. So for, for, for performance testing now the English language becomes um, or let's assume you know the, 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 the application or uh, what do I say um, the ATM machine supports all of them, but you have a limited time now. Okay, since you have a limited time, you, you, you have to clearly mention what is that which is in scope and you can do the performance testing and what is that which is out of scope and you, 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 you cannot do performance testing. So let's say then, then the, the in scope item becomes English. Okay. Okay. For this performance testing. Okay. Because that's the time, that's the, you know, that's based on the timelines, based on your uh, your capacity of the performance testing team. You can figure out. You figured out that you know you can do performance testing for only English because English is largely used or mainly used. Okay, then this becomes out of scope. Okay, this becomes out of scope. These two. Okay, just to get a feel for what is in scope and out of scope. Okay, then this becomes in scope for this release okay for this three months you already know what is the release because in the last class i have told you so release usually goes three months okay so in a year you will have four releases okay so <clears throat> this for this release you know uh, just doing the performance testing for english becomes in scope this becomes out of scope like this you clearly mention what is in scope and out of scope okay so you see what is in scope and then what is out of scope Okay, so in, 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 in scope again, there are different sections. Okay, so let's go through each one of them. So, so once you have defined what is in scope, okay, what is your scope of testing or what is the features that you're, uh, that you're testing, then you clearly uh, lay out your business functionalities or your business process, all the test cases that you're planning to do the testing. Okay, you put it out here. So for these same test cases, for these same test cases, you create the test scripts guys. Okay, we have spoken about this in the workload modeling. Okay, when we have done the workload modeling, we have clearly mentioned that, you know, you as a part of NFR gathering, you clearly collect what all the test cases, some people call it as test cases or business process. Okay, or business CR yeah, process or business processes that you wanted to do the performance testing for you collect. So that business functionality, you will put it over here or in simple words, what all the test cases are uh, that you're planning to test or what all the test cases that you're planning to create the test scripts that you put it out here, that you put it out here, that becomes the, that is, a, that is the in scope items. That's the in scope items. Okay. Then what kind of test that you want to do or what kind of test you're planning to perform? What kind of test you're planning to perform? Okay. Performance testing, typically you have, we haven't got to a stage where we have discussed this guys, but in performance testing, there are different types, different types, okay, of PT or performance testing, okay, there are different types of performance testing, we haven't gotten to this point yet, okay, in our regular classes, okay, uh, maybe in a week or two or probably after two weeks, we'll discuss about each one of them, 
okay so there are different types of performance testing one is load test okay and one is stress test okay then the other one is scalable uh, soak test or endurance test okay and then the next one is scalability test okay like this and then the volume test like this there are different kinds of tests we will discuss in detail or we will study in detail what each test means okay maybe this is not the right time or today is not the right time we're not going to talk about it if you're going to talk about it it will take at least a couple of hours as to what each one test is but at this point of time you just need to understand that in your test plan you talk about all of them you at least you put all of them what you're planning to test you see you're planning to test the load test endurance test stress test and the volume test and maybe the scalability test is not included as a part of this but you know in some in some projects you know it will be included as well and the first to start this is a shakedown test okay the first one is to start is a shakedown test or a dry run test okay we have spoken about this guys we have spoken about this test or dry run test so before the actual test before the actual test would uh, we go ahead and do the testing it's better you do a shakedown test or a dry run test okay so you mention each one of them clearly over here as to what you're planning to test okay and why you are planning to test about each one of them okay now i'm not going to talk about each one of them because it doesn't make too much sense at this point of time even though i talk about each of them but review this section go back and review this section once i clearly uh, explained it to you what are the different types of test okay but at this point of time you do understand that you know all the kinds of tests you wanted to do you clearly put that in your test plan okay you clearly put that in your test plan okay and there is an activity called performance monitoring which happens and we discuss about this monitoring probably three to four days and what all the things that you wanted to monitor you put it out here in this section so maybe you know maybe i'm jumping the gun and probably you know talking about this test plan way, way early but you know if i keep postponing there are so many other topics that i have to discuss so that's the reason why you know i'm talking about this test plan at this point of time okay so you know ideally speaking you have to know about different types of testing what is performance monitoring and all that before we actually talk about test plan but you know we don't have you know once i keep keep this pushing back you know we won't have enough time you know at the end to cover the, all the other topics so that's the reason why you know I'm, I'm i'm talking about the test plan right away but what i would suggest guys is once the whole course is done go back and look at this test plan again you will have a completely different perspective at that point of time again i don't want you to read every single line and you know make sure everything gets into your mind but just go through the high level as to you know get a feel for what a test plan is okay because when if they ask in the interview you not be in completely like you know um, out of sea or you know just out of the water you know fish out of the water or you know you cannot i mean it shouldn't be like that okay so um, that's the reason why and you see the workload modeling that you do okay we know how to do the workload modeling you put it out here okay the complete workload modeling sheet you put it out here okay so as i've told you one of the very important activity that happens in the test plan is the workload modeling okay this is what um, once a test lead has created the test plan and distributed this test plan distributed this test plan to all the performance testers this is the section that you would be interested in because the complete planning i mean while during the execution how with how many users you have to run what should be the pacing and all that is mentioned here in this section okay so <clears throat> then you talk about out of scope scenarios as well features that are tested and feature out of scope you know i didn't put anything over here in this section okay so typically you know if you, there is something out of scope you can put it in this section as well okay then features to be tested you clearly saying that you know what all the business processes which are there all those business processes are the test cases you have to create the test scripts for that using the view chart and then you are saying that the load scenarios as i've told you what is a load uh, what is load test what is stress test 
okay what is soak test and what is endurance test for each test how long you want it to run you see load test typically goes for one hour but these guys were running for two hours and what is the purpose of the test plan how you gonna go ahead and do the test plan what is the entry criteria and exit criteria for this test plan clearly mentioned here okay so when i said entry criteria what i mean is when can you start your test plan for example you know or uh, the the shakedown test is completed successfully that's when you can do the when you that's when you can start the test plan okay so when can you start the test plan is defined in the entry criteria and when can you say that you have you can you know you're done with the test plan that's there in the exit criteria okay for example the response times meet the eight e, uh, sla and test completion report is agreed by the stakeholders this is when you can say that this is when you can say that you're done with the test plan you're done with the test plan okay entry criteria means the test data is set up, shakedown is done, completed, and all the monitoring that you wanted to do, all the monitors that 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 should be there, they are all in place, you know. So once that is done, you know, that is the entry criteria. Okay. So exit criteria is when you can stop the test or when you can say that you have done with the test. Entry criteria is when you can start, when you can start with the load test or when you can when you can start executing the load test. That's the entry criteria. So clearly it's mentioned, you can mention it over here or the lead should mention it over here so that um, all your testers, they can go and see, oh, my inquiry criteria is met, now I can start the load test. And my exit criteria is met, now I, I need not have to do any more load test. Okay, so that's what it is. So like this, for each test, you have an entry criteria, exit criteria, what are the exact steps that you have to follow and all that. Okay. <clears throat> Now, finally, the test deliverables. Okay, once the whole performance testing is done, what is the deliverables that the different uh, different teams can expect? Okay, once the whole performance testing is done, the first deliverable is the test plan itself. Okay, second one is all the scenarios. Uh, actually, the test scripts. Okay, I would say test scripts is also a very very important deliverable. Okay, all the test scripts. Okay, then. The scenarios, when I said scenario, the load test, stress test, endurance test and all that. Okay, the results, the test results and finally the test completion report. So these are the five deliverables usually you will have it. So once you say that you have done with performance testing, you should have all these deliverables. Okay, delivered to your client. Okay, so if they have any doubt, they come to the test plan, they look at all the deliverables that you are supposed to give them. They can, you know, if in case if you miss something, they can always ask from. Okay, they can always ask for that particular deliverable. Okay, so if you're, before you start performance testing itself, you know what all the deliverables you are supposed to give. So the test plan is this document. Test scripts. Where do you create the test scripts, guys? Where do you create the test scripts? Where do you create the test scripts? So where do you create the test scripts? Yeah, in the view gen. Okay. So in the view gen is where you create the test scripts in the test design phase. Okay. So that needs to be done. And this is during the execution phase. The test scenarios is during the execution phase. Okay. So we also know that multiple, we, al we already discussed multiple groups will make what? Will make a multiple groups will make a multiple groups will make a what? will make a test scenario. We have discussed this. If you have followed my classes, definitely you know that. Okay. Multiple groups will make a test scenario. Okay. And this is done in the control. Okay. And finally, these two things will be done in the analysis. Will be done in the analysis. Okay. We haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay. So, <clears throat> Okay, so that's about it. So these are the deliverables. Okay, I'm no, I'm going a little fast, uh, but I, I I want you to get a feel for what is a test plan. Okay, so even though I go really in depth and explain because there's so many concepts here which is not covered in the class and it is very difficult. So tr try to understand as much as you could, not each and every line because it's not possible. I'm telling. Okay, but definitely after the whole course is done, you go back and look at it, you will right away know what each section is. It becomes that much important. 
So if you want me to give a recap of this whole test plan after the course is done, again, I will go through that in case if you wanted it. But at that point of time, definitely you will understand. But you have the recorded videos. You can look at the recorded videos again after the whole course is done. Okay. But again, I'm telling you guys before going through the interview, just look at this test plan. Okay. You will get that confidence. Okay. Oh, it's so simple. I mean, these are the things which needs to be there. Okay. And also somebody who haven't done performance testing, but you're going as that you have done it. You will have now a better picture. Okay. As to what will happen in the real world. Okay. Now let's look at the approach. Let's look at the approach. I'll go through a couple of points to get a feel for what is the approach is. Okay. So you see, <coughs> when will the performance testing needs to be done? Okay. When is the performance testing get started guys? Can somebody like read it out for me or you know? Yeah. Can you please read it out for me? When does this performance testing done or when will the performance testing be done? Yes. When would the performance testing be done? Can you unmute yourself and read it out for me, please? One of you. Performance testing must be conducted after the completion of SIT. What is SIT, guys? System integration testing. Wonderful. Okay. Always remember that, you know, in testing, there are different testings. First, system testing will be done. Okay. People typically call this as manual testing or functional testing. Then system integration testing is done. Okay. Then we are supposed to do performance testing. <coughs> and if there is security testing as well, then security testing as well. Okay. So performance testing and security testing can have, can can be done in parallel. Can be done in parallel. Okay. Both of these can be done in parallel. In the interviews, they will ask about this question. So in the recent interview, as to one of the students have went to the interview, they did ask you. So when will you do performance testing? When will you do performance testing? So uh, the, uh, the appropriate answer is once the system integration testing is done, once the system testing is done, then you have a system integration testing. And once that is done, performance testing ideally. But for me, what has happened is once the system testing was done, once the system testing was done, okay, so the system integration testing and performance testing and security testing, okay, these were all done in parallel. They are all started in parallel because of lack of time and this is what actually happens in the real world as well. This is what actually happens in the real world as well, okay, because once these two testings are done, you might not have enough time to do performance testing. Okay, so better, better you start your performance testing. Typically, in most of the cases, it starts as soon as the system integration testing is done. So this candidate has uh, answered the question. Okay, after system testing, our performance testing was done. Okay, so after system testing, my performance testing was done, which is the right answer. This is the right answer. Okay, and then immediately the interviewer has asked why, why, okay. Why after performance testing the system integration? Okay. Yeah. Then can somebody tell me why? Why it should be that way? Okay. Whoever is there, somebody who's not completely new to IT field, it's very difficult to answer. But somebody who's already in the IT field, they can speculate as to why. Okay. If it's lack of time, then both of them should be done in parallel. But what I'm asking is, why after system testing performance testing could be done, but why not in parallel with system testing? Why not in parallel with system testing? Why performance testing needs to be started only after the system testing? Even for my project, you see after the system is testing is done in parallel to system integration testing. I was doing performance testing because of lack of time. Ideally, it should be after system integration testing, but this is what it is. Okay, but at least the system testing needs to be done before performance testing. What could be the reason for that? Okay, I'm getting some answers. Okay, Sumati, after functional testing, only PT must be done. Yes, Sumati, that's what I'm saying, but I'm asking why. Okay, why? What should be the reason? Wonderful, guys. Wonderful, Shraddha and Samir. Wonderful guesses. Okay, Rahul, you give, give it a, gave it a try, even though, you know, IT is new to you. Wonderful. Okay, so typically, after system testing, 
after system testing okay after system testing after system testing there are no defects okay no defects in the application some people call this as bugs also okay in the application okay somebody new to completely IT field it's a little difficult to understand this okay defects or bugs means there is no deviation from the requirement or the application is behaving the way it is okay then this is when the application is stable this is when the application is stable now performance testing can be done on the stable application so imagine what would happen if system testing okay system testing and performance testing are happening in parallel okay in parallel okay let imagine what would happen okay so imagine what would happen okay what would happen so both of them have started in parallel so you are doing your performance testing and system testing they are doing their system testing and you are doing your testing and both of them are in parallel and after few weeks or couple of weeks then you said oh performance testing is done okay is done and it's good okay this is what you have this is what you have said or this is what you are uh, recommended or you know suggested or you came to the conclusion after doing the performance system okay now system testing is done in parallel system testing is happening in parallel okay system testing is happening in parallel okay which means that there are some defects or there could be defects or that typically there could be, there will be defects so once there are defects these defects will be fixed okay these defects will be fixed and there is a new release or build in the last class we have discussed about what is a new release or build so can somebody tell me what is a new release or new build guys when i said new release or new build what do i mean in the last class i've clearly told you you know as a it guy forget about performance testing guy you need to understand this terminology okay new release or new build okay which means that which means that new code okay so they have made changes to existing code or they have added a new code which means that whatever the performance testing you have done it's all wasted because it's done on the old code now okay so old code you have done the performance testing on the old code okay imagine guys imagine somebody is working on it somebody is working okay somebody is working in a supermarket okay in india it's called supermarket in us it's called a gloss grocery store okay grocery store okay like a uh, like a walmart now let's say uh, you are the one who are supposed to go around and check and note down okay note down all the stock which is there on the racks okay which are there on the racks like you're saying that oh there are so many soaps there are so many um, shampoos over there so you're noting down all the stock which are there on different racks and you're working on the grocery store now a new stock have come and they have arranged all the new stack again they have they have uh, they have put the new stock into the racks okay now all your efforts is gone because whatever you have noted down it's no more it's no more valid because they have updated the racks or they have filled the rack with the new stock so you have to go ahead and again note down everything then again the new stack has come and then they fill the fill the racks with the new stock so every time you have to go back and do it because the old readings are no more applicable the old readings that you have noted down is no more applicable because every time they are making changes to it or people came and bought out some stuff so they have took away some stuff and they have filled the fill the new rack so then again you have to go down and note down the and note down the stock so this activity will go on it's a never ending story similarly if system testing and uh, performance testing is happening in parallel okay system testing and performance testing is happening in parallel okay so <clears throat> then you know they they keep on changing the code because there will be defects when they are doing the system testing okay there will be defects all the time when there are defects they have to fix the code and they fix the code they change the code again there is a new build now again you do the performance testing again there is a defect because defects usually comes in you know it will come every day the defects would come every day so every day there will be changes to the code or every week there are changes to the code and every week there is a new build 
So again, you have to go back and do the performance testing. How many times you will do the performance testing because every week you have a new code. So that cannot be done. This is what we are saying that it is instable code or instable build. So for doing the performance testing, for doing the performance testing, what is the basic thing you need? You need a stable code. You need a stable code. Stable code means which does not, does not change, which does not change that often at least. At least, you know, if it's changing after two to three weeks, then there is a point. But every week or every day it is changing, there is completely, it's instable code or instable build and you cannot do the performance testing on that. You cannot do the performance testing on that. Okay, so are you understanding guys why system testing and performance testing cannot be done in parallel? I want you to understand this because this could be your interview question. This could be your interview question. They would ask you, what is the ideal time? When would you do performance testing? Only after the system testing is done. Why? Because when they are doing the system testing, every day they are identifying the defects. When they are identifying the defects, they have to fix it. Once they have fixed it, then there is a new release. Okay, for example, okay, again guys, you know, when I said you are working, it's not, don't literally imagine that you are working, but I use this term. Let's say you are working on a, uh, uh, as a quality analyst in a trouser, Trouser warehouse. Okay, so maybe let's say Lee Levi's. I'm using Lee Levi's because all the Indian guys are also aware of these brands. Okay, so you're doing the quality check. So whenever they manufacture the jeans, first you have to check it before you know it would be shipped out of the shipped out of the company or or the um, or that manufacturing unit. Okay, uh, so you took the you took the jeans. Okay, then you looked at whole of it. You looked at whole of it and then you identified some defects saying that oh this pocket need not have to be here and then the the, the jeans is like uh, you know uh, rigged more than uh, more than required so you came out with some defects okay then you said that okay send this uh, send these jeans to fixing so they send it back to the fixing again the tailor has uh, you know done the changes that you have recommended again it came back to me came back to you now again you identify some defects you you did the quality check again you identify the defects and you send it back so this is not the stable jeans it cannot be sold outside you cannot do the performance testing on it so once all that fixing is done all that fixing is done now you send these jeans to performance testing performance testing is maybe you know they will they will pull it you know they will put the stress test or they, they might do anything on it i don't think there is performance testing on jeans but just for you know just for the discussion purposes okay so now you see every time you're sending back he's fixing the defects and giving it to you now again you're checking the jeans again you're identifying the defects sending it back to the tailor what is the tailor or developer is doing he's fixing the he's fixing the jeans again he's fixing the jeans is giving back to you so like this multiple iterations are going on until you get a stable version of the genes but you say that oh this is good okay similarly same thing is happening with the code as well you're doing the system testing the code and then there are defects then this will be fixed by the developer which means that there are code changes once there are code changes there is a new release or the build and now <clears throat> when I said new release or the board build it means that they made uh, they made changes to the existing code or they realized that they have to add this extra piece of code for fixing the defect. It could be any of that. So you have a new build. Like this, every one week or every one day, you are, every two days or every three days, you are having the new builds. You can never do the performance testing on it. Because you have done, let's say, there is a build. Let's say, guys, there is a build 3550. Okay, 35505. Okay, you have done the performance testing on this and you say that, oh, performance is good. Then, by the time you said performance test is good, there is the next release 3506, which means that the code is changed. Now, again, you have to do the performance testing on it. Then, by the time you are doing this, again, there could be new build because there are defects and all that. Then, there could be 3507. Like this, how many times you will do the performance testing? It's not possible. What you are asking for is, you want a stable build, which means that there will not be any more changes. Or if there are changes, there could be only one. There, 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 there's not like every two days, three days you're getting the build. So you cannot do that. Okay. Maybe there is one change. Probably you can go back and again execute the load test again just to make sure the performance is good. Okay. But every week there is changes, then it's called unstable code. By the way, this is what we call this as unstable. Okay. Instable. Insta what is this? Instable or unstable? What is the exact word, guys? Instable is what you call or unstable? 
unstable yeah it's unstable that's what i said okay so this is what an unstable code is and performance testing can never be done on unstable code or build okay this is the right answer guys this is the right answer if they ask you okay so it needs to be done in the stable build or performance testing needs to be done on the stable build or the stable code stable code or stable release okay so that's what it is you cannot say release or the code so this is what it is guys so you see clearly i'm saying that performance testing must be done after the completion of sit for me but in some companies it's just done after st itself okay uh, and uh, if any bottlenecks are found an extra cycle of test execution will be needed what does that mean guys what does that mean can somebody please explain can somebody tell me if any bottlenecks are found an extra cycle of test needs to be done performance testing issues are there then new test execution should be happening wonderful wonderful okay so whenever we are talking about test execution okay test execution what do i mean what do i mean a load test i know i haven't covered this okay stress test in the class or soak test or scalability test okay so this is what i talk about whenever i talk about performance test execution so what the, what they are saying is if there are bottlenecks if there are bottlenecks okay which means that there are issues in the system okay these issues these issues or bottlenecks will be fixed by your developer who, by by whom it will be fixed guys it will be fixed by whom it will be fixed by whom a developer or a developer or a performance engineer okay performance engineer okay it will be fixed once it is fixed once it is fixed we have already discussed in the ptlc we have discussed in the ptls once it is fixed you have to go back and execute again you have to go back and execute again you have to go back and execute again you cannot trust them that they have actually fixed so there is an extra cycle of again load test needs to be done what happens in the real world guys is you do the load test the response times are bad the response times are bad which means that there are bottlenecks in the system then you send it for fixing the developer or performance engineer will fix it then you go back then again you go back and execute the load test okay if it is good it is fine if it is bad then what would you do again guys if it is bad what would you do again if it is bad what would you do again okay you have executed it again the performance is bad what would you do again wonderful rahul you go through another cycle of the same thing you go through another cycle of the same thing like this cycle after cycle after cycle before you get a stable performance and once that is done then you start executing the stress test soak test and scalability test that's actually happens in the real world this is what happens in the real world okay so that's what you're saying if the performance bad performance is bad or bottlenecks are identified an extra cycle of test execution is required especially the load test not all the test okay and see the the planning this is the plan okay you see exactly what it looks like you know i'll walk you through this you know this is the plan again your test manager or test lead or you yourself can plan it different stages okay test plan test environment test data test scripts and test execution for each one of them what all the sub tasks which are available and what is the start date what is the end date and the owner of the task okay so in the test plan let's see what all the stages okay test plan preparation which means that this document needs to be prepared concentrate here guys it's very easy to understand okay so this this document needs to be created let's say the start date is 11 11 20 2018 okay now this document preparation needs to be done let's say by 11 26 2018 so you have almost 5 days or 6 days to complete this test let's say the owner of this is nelly okay the owner of this is nelly now walk through okay walk through so let's say she is a performance tester now walk through again it is done let's say on 11 
2018. In typically when you come to IT industry, guys, make sure first is day day, month month, year year year. Okay, in US, I know this is how it is followed, so you need not have to be explained. But for Indian folks, I want you to know that first is month month, then day day, and then year 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 year. Okay, in India we have a habit of putting first date and then month. No, this is month and date is what usually people follow. Okay. And the walkthrough should happen on the same day, okay? Or let's say the next time, you have two days for that planning and all that. Sending the invite and walking through and all that. And let's say the, the lead for uh, uh, this project is Samir, okay? So we'll put Samir's owner. So owner Samir has to walk through this test plan. Sign off. Sign off, let's say, is on 11, 28, okay? 2018, okay? So sign off needs to be done. Uh, people have three days, let's say. You give three days or two days for sign off so that the people needs to review and sign off. Okay. The owner of it is maybe Samir himself who needs to send. But along with that, all the stakeholders who needs to sign off. Let's say Jack and Mark and Stacy are the ones who are, who are supposed to give the sign off. So you put all the names of them. Okay. Samir will be coordinating with all these three guys to get this signed off. Okay. Now this is done. The test environment, okay? Okay, you see, uh, we have our own performance testing environment, okay? There are only two tasks. The performance test plan uh, environment is already built. I'm assuming that, you know, it's already built. If this is a new project, then, then we have to assume that it's not built and you have to add that line as well, okay? PT environment, okay? PT environment needs to be built, okay? Needs to be Build. okay so time probably when the project has started pro probably let's say the project has started on 01 2018 okay uh, it needs to be done by let's say 11 31 they take at least one month to complete this okay and who is the owner uh, the infrastructure team okay infrastructure team but let's say your test manager is supposed to coordinate with them and make sure it is done by 11 31 so you let's say your test manager name is uh, Praveen uh, or let's say um, Kyron, okay, Kyron, okay. So Kyron is supposed to coordinate, is the test manager, let's suppose. So he's, he's coordinating with the infrastructure team and making sure your performance testing environment will be up and running by the, by the end of 11th month, okay. Code drop, let's say it's 12.01.2018. Okay, so code drop means with the latest build, whatever the latest build that needs to be deployed into this application. You already know what is deployment, guys. Okay, if you have attended my architecture diagram, you know what is deployment. So the latest code, whatever is the latest code, which is there on 11.21. Okay, as you see, the code changes every day or it, it could change every week. So whatever is the latest code, if you're going with this, the latest build is 35507, okay? That needs to be deployed. And let's say for deployment, you're giving two days, okay? Okay, so who is again, uh, let's say responsible is your lead, who is Samir. So Samir coordinates with the dev team to get this done, okay? So like this. And shakedown, shakedown, once the code is done, then you will do in the shakedown. Okay, so 11, 12, 02, 2018. Okay, for shakedown, one day is enough. So 12, 03, 2018. Okay, again, who is responsible? Let's say the performance tester typically is responsible for that. The owner is Melly. Okay, again, test data setup. Uh, it could start in parallel with the test environment. There is no dependency of this. So it could start as soon as the environment is ready. The environment is ready by when? 11.31. So the test data setup can happen from 11.31. Once the environment is ready, you can start working on the uh, test data setup. Okay. So let's say you need one week for that. So 12.07.2018. Okay. So yeah, you, you need one week for that. Again, who will help you with the test data setup? The DB team. Okay. Let's say a proper person from the DB team, you can put a name over here. Okay. And then... And then maybe your lead should be coordinating with the uh, with the development team to get it done. It is the uh, it is the ownership of DB team and Samir to get the test data done. And by this time, it should be done. 
or maybe you can give one more week because test data setup is a lot of time okay maybe you're giving two weeks okay then <clears throat> then the projects then the test scripts okay this is the third phase the test scripts we have assumed this is a buffer project right so let's say buffer yeah test scripts okay so instead of buffer let's just say test script preparation okay let's say test script preparation okay so as soon as the shakedown is done guys as soon as the shakedown is done you can start creating the test test scripts so 12 0 3 2018 is when you can start creating the test scripts okay maybe let's say you need one month okay so which means that 12 30 2018 okay so who is the owner maybe Melly is the only performance tester is she's the only one who is creating the test scripts so you can put the test scripts she has one month now to create the test scripts as you can see as she is creating the test scripts there is test data which is happening at the back end okay for creating the scripts you need a minimum data you need you don't need a whole lot of data so as soon as that data is done you know she can start creating the test scripts so these two things can happen in parallel as well okay then you then I've told you then I have told you uh, when it comes to when it comes to test execution when it comes to test execution when it comes to test execution there are different things you see shakedown test load test some people call this as peak load test as well soak test stress test and you have a scalability test you can put that scalability test also over here okay okay scalability test So for each test, how long you want to take? So once the test scripts are done, then you can do the sheet down test. Okay. Okay. So once the test scripts are done, this is when you can start with the execution. The first test, as I've told you, is the shakedown test. When I'm discussing about the controller, I've clearly told you why you need a shakedown test. Why you need a shakedown test. Can somebody tell me why would you need a shakedown test, guys? Can somebody tell me why would you need a shakedown test? I've, I've spent quite some time help, understanding like you know uh, helping you understand wh why you need a shakedown test. Can somebody tell me why would you need a shakedown test? Okay. One is to verify with whether all your scripts are working fine and you can go into the actual testing. And what are the other reasons? Because that's an interview question. Okay. So Samir, yeah, check the no errors in the scripts and more. Wonderful Shrita, there's no environment issues. Good. I want to hear from all of you. I mean, uh, all of you would have attended that class. No, no issue with the data, no issue with the environment, no issue with the scripts. Yes, these are all the reasons why you need a shakedown test. Okay, somebody who have attending my classroom classes, we have also demonstrated that. In the first run, there were a lot of errors. Then we went ahead and fixed those errors as well. And we understood why shakedown test is so important. Okay. Anyways, first you do the shakedown test. Again, you put the dates for that. Maybe 1-1-2018. One, one, okay. And uh, let's say you, you have given yourself two days for that, for the shakedown test. So you give that. Okay. Who is responsible? Typically, uh, Melly, I mean, the performance tester herself will be responsible for that. Like this, you give number of days, how many you need. Typically for the first test, which is the load test, you give one week, guys. Okay, because you don't know what all the issues you might face. So typically you give one week for this. Okay, so typically you give one week for this, the first test, because there are a lot of cycles. Okay, as you have discussed, the performance is bad. You send them, send them the code, they fix it, they give it back to you. Then, then, then there is cycles. So there could be more than one cycle here. Okay, there could be more than one cycle here. This is just we have discussed that. Okay, so typically you have one week to one and a half week which you can give here and all other tests one day is more than enough because once this test is done, you know that the scripts are working fine, the environment is run, the performance is good and all that and none of them needs more than one cycle except if possible maybe scalability test. So typically you give only one day for the other test. Okay, so maybe this is one day, one day, one day and typically it will be all well. <laughs> So now you've got an overall picture as to what would happen. If you have heard this last 10 minutes very clearly, the last 10 minutes very clearly, I'm telling you guys, you would have gotten the complete picture as to what goes in the real world. 
who is responsible for what activity and each task how many subtasks it will be typically divided into and it sees you know each task will be shared across the responsibilities ownership will will be shared across performance tester or performance test lead and performance test manager okay or maybe the clients as well okay so you got some some things you would have this I, I identified that some tasks will happen in parallel as well the ones which doesn't have dependency those tasks have in parallel you see this test environment preparation and all these activities happening in parallel because test environment has nothing to do with test planning okay test data a certain part of test data and test kits would happen in parallel okay so like this uh, you know and <clears throat> and you see the execution only happens after the complete tests are, test scripts are created and you see the the test scripts only happen after the environment is ready and certain data is available so like this there's a lot of dependencies okay there are a lot of tasks which happen in parallel okay so you need to you know pay attention if you if you paid attention in the last 10 minutes you clearly know what happens what all the tasks which happens and who is responsible for that uh, what and uh, what all the things which happen in parallel and now you can talk in the interviews as to what will happen or even now before you get into the project you know what all will happen when will you start creating the test scripts when the test data is set up to certain extent is ready and the performance testing environment is done and also the test planning is done once the whole test planning is done and performance testing environment is ready and to certain extent the test data is ready this is when the test scripts would start, uh, the test, would, uh, test scripts would start getting created a lot of people will ask me this question so kumar kumar i am going into the new project it's completely new to me what would i do as soon as i go there should i start creating the test scripts from day one no typically if they hired you on probably let's say on 11 1 11 1 you would start creating the test scripts from 11 12 03 maybe after a month okay or probably this is when actually the project has started this is when the nfrs are being collected okay okay correct so definitely like you're not starting on day one you're not start you're not, you are not creating the test scripts this is something which i want you to get into your heads guys okay or maybe you know the project has started on 11 1 itself okay but they have hired you probably on 11 15 or 11 20 then within 10 days within 10 days yeah within 10 days you are starting the scripting so what would i what would you what would i suggest okay when will i start creating the test scripts I'm not the person to answer. Once you get into the project, see if the test plan is created. If the test plan is created, go ask for the test plan. And once go once the test plan, you go ask for it. Go into the section called test schedule and milestones and see, okay, what all the responsibilities of the performance tester and when is the test script uh, creation and when you are starting creating the test scripts. You yourself will know when when you would start creating the test scripts. Or when you would start creating the scripting part okay are we clear guys are we clear all of you this section are we clear okay so instead of you asking me it's better you look at this uh, test plan or the test schedule so that you right away know when what are your responsibilities as a performance tester and when will you start doing your activity okay so typically what I would say is before you are hired, you would have one month before you start creating the test scripts. In that one month, you are trying to understand the business functionalities, the application, you read through the test plan architecture, uh, you go through the NFR documents, so in, and uh, see how the tool is and all that. Okay, there are tasks that you get familiar with in that one month, not that you will go just go and sit idle. These are all the things that you do. Uh, but you know before you start creating the first script it will be a certain time okay this is what it is for general you know uh, v model there are different models like you know agile and all that when you get into agiles you know the whole things will change okay but this is for the v model that i'm talking about okay so we'll take a break of five minutes guys i know uh, 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 we already consumed one hour all i need is 15 20 minutes and then we'll be done with the test plan okay so but i know there are no responses coming from you so uh, it's a little disappointing from my end um, so i'll give you a five to ten minutes break i know there's a lot of theory and if you have not known uh, it this is also overwhelming this is also overwhelming but don't get overwhelmed guys you know it's not a problem 
okay once you get into the it field you know as you spend more time over there this is so all you know all the task you experience it over there i am right now i'm talking about it but once you get there you experience it and once you experience it you will not forget it okay but i just want you to somebody who is not getting the whole thing it is totally fine if you get 20% of whatever whatever i've spoken it should be good enough but what i would suggest is listen to this recorded videos over and over and over and over again maybe while you are traveling on uh, or while you are tr- commuting on your uh, on your uh, what do you say cars just hook this up to your um, you know speakers the car speakers you know you would have plugs right you know you can play this video in the from your mobile phone and then connect it to your uh, car speakers maybe via bluetooth or there are there are you know there are there are cords using which you can connect and then don't watch it just listen to it don't watch the video because while you are driving it's not it's not suggestible to 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 watch but you know at least you can hear rather than hearing music you can hear this maybe if you are hearing 3 to 4 times then the then the thing starts becoming clear and clear to you who are completely new to it every day you commute right everybody commutes like at least half an hour as soon as you start commuting you know play it in your mobile phone this video and who connect it to your car speakers and start peacefully here how much ever you could at least you are comfortable at least these words like build release you know system testing when it will happen and all that becomes clear to you and this task sub tasks everything will become clear to you okay that's what i would suggest guys there is no other way so again and again over and over again you hear those terms will get into your mind and whether you are going as a qa or anything else you are supposed to use this terminology the bills the code defects bottlenecks you know test plans test environments all this okay so this is what i would suggest so i'll be back in 10 minutes guys uh, let let me take it 10 minutes you know 5 minutes is too less okay let me take it 10 minutes break when i come back expect the class to go for maybe 15 more minutes okay thank you guys thank you for your time so thank you for the audience i was expecting uh, you know uh, i know it's a holiday weekend and all that so still there is a good crowd i'm so happy about the crowd okay there are certain people who are interested okay nice to see that yeah so we'll be back in 10 minutes
Okay, guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, thank you. So I took a little longer break, I believe, maybe 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. So, yes. So let's get started. I think the session is getting still recorded. Oh, yeah, I should have stopped recording actually. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> now, the next section in the previous sections, we have clearly seen the test schedule and the milestone dates for each uh, task. Okay, the each task of performance testing life cycle, each deadline for each of the subtasks, and the owner of that subtask we have clearly mentioned. Okay, if you just understand this Excel sheet or this one single page, okay, I'm telling you. Clearly, you know what would actually happen in the real time project. Okay. So the last 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is before the break, listen to it multiple times so that you get a clear picture as to what all the tasks which are there, who is responsible for what and how much timelines usually a particular task would take. Okay. And what are the things which happen in parallel? And if you are a performance tester, then you should put yourself in the shoes of Melly and think about it. Okay. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Okay. <clears throat> now, yeah, roles and responsibilities. Whose responsibility is what? Okay. Typically, you know, you have to have the responsibility of all the people clearly laid down. Okay. There are a lot of people involved. Okay. So first, the program manager. Okay. Let's say the program manager is, um, take any name, take any name. Maybe, maybe Majid is our program manager. So, so let's say Majid is a program manager and program manager means he's a big guy. I'm telling you guys. Okay. He's the head of development team, you know, system testing, system integration testing, performance testing, security testing, or in other words, the testing development, uh, the database servers, architect for all of them are uh, reporting to this program manager. So he's the head of the complete project. Okay, who is a program manager? He's a head of the complete project. Okay, typical. Okay. Okay. 
okay program manager so typically is a head of the complete project okay so complete project means he's the head of developers okay the, the head of developers database guys network guys okay and uh, performance uh, performance testing you know in testing means all of them like you know system testing integration testing all of them okay everybody out there okay so uh, okay so the db guys whoever is involved in the project is the head of them guys every single uh, guy who is involved in the project he will be reporting to the program manager it's as simple as that so what is his what is the what, what is the roles and responsibility of his okay so he's the escalation point escalation for blah 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 escalation point for all the testing related risk escalation point for all the defect fixes so any escalation you are supposed to do so is this the guy okay so saying that oh the db team is not working with you properly then you escalate to the program manager or the network team are not helping you out or is not uh, properly responding to you then you go to if you go to the performance test manager he's only the manager of performance testing he's not the manager of other teams so whenever you're dealing with other teams okay and they are not responding back to you or they are not doing their work or they are not uh, they are not responsible enough in in uh, in answering your questions and all that so you would you now you can go to our majit okay so majit are you there no majit is not there so he left for the day okay so yes he's the he's the guy for that okay then then you have your performance test manager okay then you have your performance test manager so let's assume i am your performance test manager this is instead of mercury we thought it will be a bofa okay bofa okay so instead of mercury we thought it's a bofa so performance test manager so you see provide supports for performance testing addresses and provides updates on mercury defects and all that okay both are defects okay so this is a guy who is completely responsible okay for all that this is from the vendor side okay if there are any vendors okay now it's a test team again we have our own program manager okay so escalating point related to the issues as noted above escalated point for all the testing related activity and all that actually this guy cannot be repeated in two of them okay but you know let's say it's there okay it program manager his responsibilities it project manager his responsibilities maybe performance tester is also there performance test lead okay his responsibilities okay performance test man uh, performance tester or performance test specialist okay his responsibilities like this for all of them you clearly put down what all the responsibilities okay performance test lead maybe creating the test plan okay okay driving driving the testing related activities okay now you tell me as a performance tester what all the things that you are supposed to do just can can you tell me any responsibilities as a performance test specialist can you come out with some any responsibilities that you can think of you have been listening to my classes from last 3 uh, weeks as a performance tester what is that thing that that you are responsible for anything that you could remember wonderful yeah creating test scripts creating test scripts using vision okay uh, it's creating the test scenarios using controller okay executing executing the scenarios not scripts okay creating test report test completion report or test report okay so like this there are multiple uh, uh, um, what, what do i say multiple uh, tasks for the multiple tasks for the test test specialists as well which will be clearly laid down here which will be clearly laid down here okay like this each guy and then their corresponding responsibilities again you got into the project you wanted to know your responsibilities obviously they will tell you what is your role name is it a performance test lead or performance test specialist come back over here check what all the um, responsibilities you have as 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 a performance test specialist so most likely they not this is what you go with okay but if you're going with this one as well clearly uh, see what is the responsibility 
things and also look at the responsibilities of other people as well so that if you face some issues you know whom to go to okay if you face some issues you know whom to go to okay so you you have to clearly see these sections to see who all the people who are involved in the project like this now you see there is a guy called kumar there is a guy called gupta there is a guy called anand the different people involved with different roles and you know where to go to if there is an issue you know where to go to if there is a issue okay now test environment guys okay we already spoken about this test environment in our um, uh, uh, in our, in our architecture uh, classes okay clearly clearly we have discussed about this test environments okay so the same thing you put it down here okay so if you wanted to know about the test environment this is one place you can come and look at what all the servers which are there what is the hardware and what is the software which are involved what are the specifications and all that it is clear okay and what are the different softwares okay so like this we are using ais server over here okay so like this all the information will be put down over here okay and the test tools that you are planning to use for this project maybe the load runner maybe dynatrace and all that and purpose of each of those tools and the test data what all the data that is required and what is the source so that's about it guys so that's about it okay and finally finally there are two things that are extremely important the people are leaving i know it's little boring and hard so people are leaving so finally there is before i let you go okay i'll talk about these two things i just need 10 minutes one is the test entry criteria and one is the test exit criteria in the interviews they will definitely ask about this entry criteria and exit criteria guys okay test entry criteria and exit criteria an entry criteria is when can you start to when when can you start your testing okay when can you start your testing in in the interviews they will ask you when when can you start your performance testing when the entry criteria is met don't tell them that when the scripts are ready or when i receive the nfr document or when the test plan is ready all that when when can you start doing the performance testing when the entry criteria is met and when can you stop your performance testing in the project when the exit criteria is met as simple as that so let's see what is the entry criteria performance test plan is approved okay workload modeling is completely approved okay test schedule is approved okay agreed acceptance criteria is agreed non functional requirements are available and approved okay all applications functionality tested in uh, on the system integration level okay which means that the system testing is done okay sit is done okay so like this there could be lot of entry criteria that you put okay once all the entry criteria are put you just mark each one as yes and when you see all the yeses over here then you can start doing your executing your performance test maybe load test or stress test or scalability test or endurance test or endurance test okay this is what it is guys okay when all the activities or all the points which are mentioned in the entry criteria they are met then you can start executing your performance testing okay you see application functionality is stable and no outstanding defects okay like this there are lot of entry criteria which are there you put down all the entry criteria or lead will put down and before you start executing the test come to the entry criteria make sure everything is make sure everything is achieved once everything is approved or achieved then then you can start your performance testing or start executing your performance testing okay so go through the entry criteria points here guys very important in the interview they will ask you what are, what is the entry criteria for your project or what is that you put as an entry criteria even though you didn't do the performance test plan or you haven't created it but you are supposed to know the test test entry criteria because you would have executed the test before executing the test you have to come back here and check with my entry criteria smart yeah entry criteria will be there for manual testing as well in every testing you have the entry criteria okay now exit criteria same thing when can you stop your performance testing you see the test completion report is prepared signed off by the relevant stakeholders the results are available okay <clears throat> so clearly like you know 100% test in scope has been executed as per the test plan so in the test plan whatever you said which are in scope 
all of that is done. Like this, there are a lot of exit criteria as well. Okay, so this is extremely important, guys. Entry criteria and exit criteria. In simple words, entry criteria is when you can start your performance testing or when you can start executing your performance test, and exit criteria is when you can stop your performance test. When you can stop your performance test. Okay, and progress tracking. This is extremely important for the high level management. If the if the project is going well or not, and when it has went into red or when it is in green or when it went into yellow, they will be able to look it from here. They will keep multiple checkpoints, and then based on that, they will they will they will uh, see the progress of your project. CC kickoff meeting. Okay, test plan sign off. Walk through the load test plan. Lock in the scope. Okay, that's the first checkpoint. Okay, this is when you know that okay the project is starting when the test plan is signed off. Okay, second second meeting is when when you have the meeting the first meeting is the test plan meeting. Okay, when you walk through the test plan. Second meeting is the checkpoint. At what points? Forty percent of the project, seventy percent of the project. Maybe as the scripts are done, you will have a meeting with all the people and say that oh there are complete uh, fourteen. For 14 scripts, I have to create. Now we are done with the 14 scripts. Okay, you will set up a meeting with the client. You show them all the scripts and say that, oh, this is all done. Okay, that is 40%. Maybe once you have done with the load test, you will have one more meeting. Okay, one more checkpoint meeting with the end client. And finally, once the whole test is done, you will have one more meeting with the end client to show the complete report. Again, there will be a walkthrough of this report. And status. When will you give the status on the daily basis? You send a status mail on the daily basis. You send a status mail on the daily basis. The purpose, you know, whatever it is, you you can tell them update that the, whatever the defects is causing the issue, any issues which is stopping you, the people who are not supporting you, and how many scripts you have completed. These kind of things you will keep a update. Okay, so these are the reports. So you you. you Give them a daily status report. Okay, by the end of the day, you will have a meeting at the starting of the project once the test plan is signed off, and you will have a checkpoint at 40% and 70% to show the results. Maybe once the scripts is done, you will have a meeting with your end client, and once the load test is done, you will have a meeting with them, and once the whole testing is done, you will have one more meeting. So this is what it is. So this is about it, guys. So this is how a test plan would look like. Okay. So I'll send you this upgrade, updated once again to you. Okay, let me save this. Okay, <clears throat> maybe I'll save this as version two because I've done some changes. I'll send this document and and the recorded video as well. Okay, so I hope you got a ballpark idea as to what how the test plan would look like. Nowhere in the class I ask you for the doubts because I don't know. Um, um, maybe the doubts would be relevant, or I just give, want you to give a walkthrough of this. Because there are certain students who wanted it as to get a feel for how a test plan would look like. So that was the general purpose of uh, why I've actually, uh, you know, uh, went for this particular walkthrough. Okay. Now, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now, guys. Not an issue. Uh, anything that you can you needed to talk to me, yeah, let me know. I am ready to answer these questions now. Okay. By the way, this is the end of the class. Okay. Uh, there is no more. Uh, the next weekend itself, we will meet for the web services. Up until then, there is no weekend classes. Okay. The regular classes will be on the regular days, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for India, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday for US. Any question, guys? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I hope you would have learned something that you didn't know, at least few points. And uh, this video will help you to, to again, I, I strongly suggest to, to, to listen to this video over and over and over and over again, so that you know you totally understand what actually happens. Okay. But web services in the next weekend will go nice and slow. We'll understand each of them. It will take a little longer time, but will go nice and slow, so that you really make sure that you know. You understand how to do performance testing on web services. Okay. On that note, I'm taking off, guys. Have a good weekend. Enjoy. See you in the next class.